Okay, we're going to talk a little bit again about gravitational potential energy. And we're going to look at this a little bit differently this time, even though we're still going to use the idea of an object sitting on the floor and then being lifted to a certain height to be placed on a shelf. Well, the height of our shelf here is going to be, let's say, three meters. And we have this object sitting down here on the floor. And the mass of this object will give it a mass of five kilograms. And if I lift this object and place it up here on the shelf, if I pick it up and set it on the shelf, in order to do that, obviously, I have to do some work. In doing that work, I'm giving this object energy and storing that energy as gravitational potential energy, GPE, when I place it on top of the shelf. So let's go ahead and calculate using the gravitational potential energy equation. Let's calculate the gravitational potential energy that this object will have when I place it on that shelf. Well, it works like this. Gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. Well, the mass is 5 kilograms times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height, 3 meters. So we see that the gravitational potential energy is well, 5 kilograms times, and I'm going to round this 9.8 off to 10 meters per second squared. We only have one significant digit here with the 3 and the 5. So I'm going to round that off to 10. So 10 meters per second squared times 5 kilograms times 3 meters. That gives us a gravitational potential energy of 150. And that's going to be kilogram meters per second squared, which is newtons times meters. So it's going to be newton meters, or kilogram meter per second squared meters. Or, to make things simpler, remember that a newton meter is the same as a joule, so I'm just going to write this as 150 joules. So the gravitational potential energy that this object has when I placed it up on top of that shelf is going to be 150 joules. Now, here's something that's real important to remember. If I'm standing over here and I pick this object up and set it up on top of that shelf, in order for me to do the work to move that object up to that height and store 150 joules of gravitational potential energy, that energy has to come from somewhere. And where that energy comes from is me. In other words, the cells of my body that are involved with the movement of this object with overcoming its weight to lift it up there, those cells burn fuel, in the case of a human it would be glucose, converting that glucose into energy that can be transferred to the ball to put the ball up on the shelf to store 150 joules of gravitational potential energy and that is an energy transformation. There's change from the energy of one object to the energy of another object. I'm giving that object the energy. In doing that, I lose 150 joules of energy. And it's interesting to note that energy could actually be converted into calories. So I would lose calories or joules and this object would gain energy in the form of joules to set it up on top of the shelf shelf and then store that energy up there. That's important to remember. The energy isn't made, it isn't destroyed, it isn't all, all we do is just change it from one place to another, giving that energy to the ball. Now the other thing we want to think about is what happens if that ball inadvertently rolls off the shelf and falls downward towards the floor? Well, as it falls downward towards the, sh the floor, its velocity is going to increase. The velocity of this mass, 5 kilograms, the velocity of that mass is going to increase as it falls down towards the floor. It's going to accelerate under the influence of gravity. And while it's accelerating and its velocity is increasing as it falls, 
that 150 joules of gravitational potential energy is turning into 150 joules of kinetic energy. Remember the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. So as the velocity of the mass increases, it's converting the gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. And by the time it reaches the floor, the gravitational potential energy, 150 joules of gravitational potential energy, have been completely changed into 150 joules of kinetic energy. And then, when that object hits the floor, it comes back out comes out as sound and it comes back out as heat. If you could actually measure the temperature of that floor when this object came down and hit it, the temperature of the floor would actually increase. That would be a result of the gravitational potential energy being converted into sound and directly into heat when it hits the floor. Well, the sound means that the molecules and particles that make up the floor and the air around it are going to move faster. So eventually it really all just shows up in the environment as heat energy. Another energy transformation from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy as it falls and then finally into heat energy after it hits the floor. So that's the situation. Energy is neither gained nor lost. It simply changes from one form to another. And it is a concept that is absolutely important to understand. And it's called the law of conservation. Of energy. That is important to understand. The law of conservation of energy. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed. It can change from one form to another. From me to the ball to gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy and finally it comes back out as heat. 